Nick Majerison here. Welcome to Top Med Talk. And on today's Top Med Talk, we're going to be listening to a conversation that Monty and the team had about a year ago on the subject of measuring outcomes after colorectal surgery. Have a listen. Top Med Talk. We're going to talk about the outcomes paper and fluid management. So yesterday I asked Dr. Thacker what she tells her patients, which are Dr. Miller's patients as well, what to expect from their enhanced recovery uh, experience. So we're just going to play a quick clip from that now. So when you talk to a patient who has no idea what that is, you know, that, that mm. I'm very intimate with that literature, but you talk to a patient who, who doesn't have a clue what to expect. Oh, you're going to cut into me. Okay, what are you going to do? and you tell them you'll be in the hospital from three to 10 days, they're quite happy with the trajectory of, of leaving in five or six days. Yeah. Where if you tell them you'll, you'll have to stay in, in the hospital overnight, it's just one night, you just have to stay in the hospital overnight. And then the next morning, you and I will discuss what we're doing for you in the hospital and when we can stop doing that and you'll be ready to go home. You have 83 year old women sitting on the side of their bed dressed at 6 a.m. rounds because they want to go home. They, they want to get back. They want to walk their dog and sleep in their own bed and have their own snacks. And so I have found that patients are very motivated for this to go much more quickly than most providers are even comfortable at this point, if given the choice. So, so there we have it. 83-year-old woman dressed uh, the day after surgery, ready to go home, chomping at the bit. So if we're going to talk about outcomes, I think some of the things I heard there were Length of stay, um, the fact that the patient's drinking, eating, mobilizing, we hope they've had a sleep, uh, patient satisfaction, and it was very much about the fact that it's because they want to go home, so choice. So, so Mike, uh, and supported by Tim, if you can take us through some of the headlines from the outcomes paper that was published and why, why that was thought to be an important as the, the f first four consensus statements. So I think that the key element of the outcome paper offers is a, a framework for how we might collect data uh, from uh, in patients undergoing enhanced recovery. And it, and it also makes a strong case that, re that really data collection is fundamental to quality improvement. If, you know, to, to, it's a well-used quote, but if you can't measure it, it's very hard to know how you're going to improve it. Uh, and we offered a three-tiered approach um, depending on uh, you know, resource availability and engagement uh, but a, a core data set that, that ought to be uh, possible to collect in almost any institution, so some basic demographics, age, uh, ASA, grade, gender, that kind of thing, uh, w whether or not the patient's on an enhanced recovery program, so no more detail than that, and then the sort of outcomes that would be uh, readily available from any hospital administration system, so um, uh, length of stay, uh, mortality in hospital, and uh, readmission to the same hospital. And then if you wanted to go further than that, there was a, there was a quality improvement data set, uh, which uh, encompasses a little bit more detail on the demographics. Importantly, ad adherence to the different elements of enhanced recovery. So you can start to get some granularity on, on how well you're performing in terms of delivering a, uh, an enhanced recovery package. Uh, and then a slightly more detailed uh, outcome set, um, uh, critically including the, this, this idea of DREAM, so the drinking, eating, mobilizing outcome. Uh, so how rapidly uh, patients are getting to that within your hospital. Uh, and then there's a, there's a, uh, we also offer a more comprehensive data set with risk adjustment, uh, adherence to ER uh, elements, and then some more detailed outcomes, including uh, patient-reported outcomes. But that, that uh, feels to me like it offers a good framework for almost anybody, depending on level of engagement and, and resource availability. So if I could jump in, Mike. So, so I, I, th I think what I'm hearing, there's a key metric. If you ask anybody what are your outcomes in your institution – they should have immediately available their mean, their average length of stay, and their readmission rates. So, Because I notice there's a tendency for people to say, I'm sure everyone's out of hospital in our institution in four days or whatever it is. But, 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 but we need to have the truth uh, and the, the mean, not the median. So the average that includes the outliers. So is that a fair comment? No, that's, that's absolutely right. I mean, we, we all are aware of, of, of the... Everybody's sure that their length of stay is short and their mortality is zero and there are no mm. complications. It's, it's only when you start to measure these things uh, that you're really able to, to reflect on, on how well you're actually doing in terms of, uh, of delivery of care and, and enhanced recovery in particular. So, so Tim... Think, uh, Monty, you're go, uh, go on, Tim. 
Sorry, do you think the mean and the median uh, are important? Like, I think particularly hospitals that, that have small, smaller numbers, um, obviously we want the mean, but I, I also encourage the median because one outlier can significantly skew the, the data if you have smallish numbers. So I think it's quite yeah. nice for hospitals to collect the mean and the median. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Mean, mean median, and range, I think, is the most useful because that, that gives you – I mean, the mean represents your – your bill, if you see what I mean, what the, the, the overall, including the complications. The, the, the median deals with that how good can we do question, and then the range lets you have an eyeball as, as if there's one extreme outlier that's wrecking it, which is going to happen to, to all of us. So, so what's happened to your, since, I mean, your pioneers have enhanced recovery in the USA in the, in the latest wave of it, uh, Tim. I think it's fair to say that there, you know, two decades ago there were other uh, uh, small small numbers of units that started this as a very early wage. But of the the latest uh, enhanced recovery wave, you, you've been pioneers. What's happened to your length of stays in colorectal, for example, with, with Dr. Thacker since you started? So I mean, it's continued to drop, and I think that's uh, an important point. Where whenever I present our data, I think a lot of people are familiar with our paper when we implemented enhanced recovery our length of stay dropped by approximately two days at the time it was from an eight days down to to six days but we've had continual improvement over the last um, um, six years so that now our, our our mean length of stay is around three and a half days so enhanced recovery is not a, an implementation and then we've we've done it and and um, there's no further improvement to make. It's a continual improvement process, and I think that is a, a very important message, and, and we're, of course, continuing to make improvements and, and refinements to, to all our pathways and, and, and will do as the years continue. So was that, uh, Tim, uh, the, the continued improvement you've had, is that um, uh, an increase in adherence to enhanced recovery, or is it that you've added elements and new things to that pathway that has improved What's been the difference, do you think, to continue that, that improvement? I think it's a lot of things. Mm. Um, I think it's um, some continued improvement. I think it's some providers, when you, once you get used to enhanced recovery, your comfort level for getting patients up and about, drinking, eating, mobilizing, mm. discharging early increases. Yeah. Um, so I do think there's, a, there's an element of, of that as well. Um, and I think we're just getting better at, at what we do, as as, as Julie like mentioned. Now. Yeah, yeah, as Julie mentioned yesterday, the messaging has changed. That trying to empower the patients, and and we do see those patients who are up early, very motivated, drinking, eating, uh, mobilizing the day after surgery, and if they're doing that now, we will send them home, where mm. perhaps we wouldn't have done um, three or four years ago. So, I Tim, what are, what are your um, sorry, sorry guys, Tim, what what are your dream rates? Do do you, what what are you hitting now for for drink eat mobilize which which a lot of people don't have at their fingertips but I think you guys do are you you sort of eighty yeah, ninety percent now it is absolutely yeah. um, and, and I think that's where it should be I don't think you're ever going to get a hundred percent when we no. have a um, at, at what stage is that are they hit are the patients hitting that dream so it's drinking on the day of surgery and eating and mobilizing on post op day one. That's amazing. Brilliant. Sorry, Mark, I think I cut you off. Did you have something there? Yeah, no, I was just going to say this notion that it's not a far and forget uh, yeah, thing yeah, with yeah. enhanced recovery. And, and our experience in the United Kingdom where, uh, you know, we had this national implica- implementation which you were involved in leading. And then uh, in a number of hospitals, the enhanced recovery coordinators, be- because it was supposedly all working, were, were mm. moved back to their original jobs. And we started to see a, a increase in, in length of stay. I think it's, it's a continuous process. Uh, and, and the data is important in, in continuing to drive that. Mm. And I think this, this measurement paper is, is going to be very important. So I think there is a, a lot of confusion about what to measure when you implement enhanced recovery. Uh, and I think the most important thing is going to be the, the simple measurements, measuring um, dreams, because a lot of people have a tendency to make things overcomplicated and to think that if we're going to implement, we have to, to measure everything. They try and measure everything, and then they fail. Uh, and I think that the message that simplicity is key and that you can just have some key outcome measures of success, I think is going to be a very important message from this paper. Top Med Talk. 
And don't forget, you can meet the Top Med Talk team. All you need to do is turn up to one of the conferences that we cover. Find out about those on edpom.org forward slash meetings. That's edpom.org forward slash meetings. Our next big event is between the 28th and the 30th of September in Chicago. That's Edpom USA, the Chicago Masters course perioperative care practicum between the 28th and the 30th of september edpom.org for more details that's edpom.org